Welcome to the Construction Defects Podcast, a show dedicated to helping home builders navigate the tricky and expensive world of construction defect suits. So with me is John Bordenero with Moisture Intrusion Solutions, an envelope consulting firm who helps builders and the associated trades in these types of problems. Speaking back to construction defect, you've got real world experience. You're familiar with a couple of the, the most notable types of claims. What, give me an example, a full real story example of construction defect and, and how it worked. So uh, I'll try to protect the names of the, of the innocent as best I can. So the one that got on TV a lot a few years ago, there was a multifamily building in Berkeley, California. The contractors are alleged to have used improper materials in constructing the balconies on these decks. Balconies are an area that we look at very, very closely with our building envelope consulting to make sure that the details on balconies are are proper and the materials being used are proper. On, on our hit list of, of the top offenders, balconies is, is if it's not the number one, it's so close to being number one, it, it, it's really immaterial. This one turned out that uh, there was a lot of warning signs that were ignored. We see that often with catastrophic failures. The material was installed wet. It, it was not allowed. The design didn't allow the material to dry and the material failed within 10 years. And it was catastrophic failure. And unfortunately, people lost lives during that incident. That contractor was lost their business license. They, they, were, they were put out of business by the state of California and rightly so. There's another couple of cases in Florida where products that were designed to be used in a dry climate were brought to the state of Florida and the builders did not take into consideration the climate differences. Again, stucco issues, again, balcony issues. So if you go from a hot, dry climate to Florida, Florida is a lot of things. It is hot, but it is not dry. So th they were not able to withstand the amount of rain they were getting on the balconies. These were poor balconies, not sloped correctly. Sliding glass doors were not sealed correctly. So a lot of water was getting into the buildings. One of them ended up being getting the state of Florida attorneys general involved to the point where that builder almost lost their building, their, their professional builder's license in the state. I think the, that final claim was well into the $100 million. We had another one in the state of Florida where it was an acquisition. We were called in to do a, a, a due diligence study. And during our due diligence study, we warned our customer that our client, we were not allowed to get inside the units, which is usually a red flag for us. If, if you don't allow us inside, there's a reason typically. Mm -hmm. So we did our due diligence. We said, we feel like there are definite issues here because we can tell that the, that the sliding glass door from the balconies are not installed correctly. They're not flashed correctly. We, f we fear there has been water infiltration to these units. Our, our customer said, thank you. They went ahead with the acquisition. And about six weeks later, we got a call that one of their tenants, this building was 90% occupied. One of their tenants had fallen through the floor at their sliding glass door. So it was an emergency, oh, come back, we check. We ended up having to do not enter tape on about 110 of their 200 balconies areas that the inside flooring, it, was, it is, we were right. The, the sliding glass doors had not been sealed correctly. Water had gotten in, just dissolved basically, subflooring inside the balconies and it was 110 units. It was probably $15 million repair bill. So again, those are extreme cases, but they're out there. You look at the case, the towers down in, in, uh, in Miami that fell down and there was a lot of VE efforts there that, that caused that building to, it was a cascading event. A lot of VE efforts initially and a lot of delayed deferred maintenance caused that building to collapse as well. Hey, would you consider the uh, Leaning Tower of Pisa the longest standing construction defect in history? Yes, I will say my civil engineering fel fellows failed that one miserably. Uh, but yes, <laughs> although it's like a landing, right? The plane lands and you can walk away from it. It's not a crash. It's perfect. Well, folks, that concludes this segment of what is a construction defect and if you're in a construction defect state. Hey, look for some more education from the Builder's Books and NAHB and their Insurance Risk Management section. It's coming up. You don't want to miss it.